Hey, hello, hello. So this is a new video. A video this time about Bakunin, a philosopher, a writer uh, who had a very active life in the 19th century. He's an anarchist, collectivist, anarchist, very exactly. So he's a socialist, libertarian. So this is another kind of socialism compared to the one that we describe so often with Karl Marx, which is authoritarian socialism. So this one, this type of libertarian socialism, is a socialism where you don't go through the phase of dictatorship of the proletariat. You just go straight away to the suppression, like you just delete the state. Because the idea of the state is a fiction. A fiction that makes us pay the bill quite much. It's a fiction, a fiction that is actually exercising authority on people. So basically, the anarchists are quite famous for rejecting any kind of authority, and uh, that's what made the um, distinction with Karl Marx very mainly because uh, Karl Marx was warning that uh, that if you want to go through delating the state to a situation of communism, you need to go first through what he called socialism, and his socialism, is, which is first of all kind of binary compared to the one of Bakunin. Bakunin was taking care of the peasants as well as the workers and uh, other structures of the society, while karma, so saying mainly the employers uh, would have the capital with the, the employees who were at this time from the working class very mainly in a situation of being exploited by the ones holding the capital who just don't want to lose their privileges. Um, Bakunin is not so binary and that's why understanding Bakunin is likely, let's say, less appealing than understanding Karl Marx. Um, um, this then therefore it's also a bit less simple um, but on the economical point of view actually Bakunin was joining Karl Marx quite much with the capital so actually Bakunin was a rival of Karl Marx uh, even if they were both um, socialist in some ways but uh, Bakunin could predict what happened in USSR later on because Bakunin is a Russian from the 19th century so it was during the Tsar, and uh, Bakunin was saying that if the proletariat gets into power, they won't be able to throw away that power. I will make a strange comparison with Lord of the Rings with Gollum, and uh, the, <laughs> like the idea of the ring of power being so addictive that you just cannot get rid of it. And uh, uh, I think it's Isildur, yeah, who refuses to throw away the ring <laughs> in the model and uh, because uh, he sees the power he can have with the ring. So yeah, let's compare the ring with the state. Like once the proletariat would hold the state, they won't just decide to delete the modern idea of the state. And that's what Bakunin wants. He said, like, the dictatorship of proletariat is still a dictatorship. That the whip held by a proletarian is still a whip. And uh, if uh, this time uh, the, the, the ones who have done the revolution compared to the past, you know, in rebellion against the past, like the pre-establishment, do the revolution to then, um, get into power instead of the bourgeoisie, then they may do the same flaws, like uh, the same mistakes than bourgeoisie, like holding uh, the, the power and uh, being at the head of the state. And we can see it quite much with the case of Lenin and specifically Stalin later on. Um, they, they just uh, never actually, like the state was super strong, more than ever. While, while according to the theories, I'm talking about the theories because it actually never been put in practice, the state should be very weak after 
communism. And now I'm having this t-shirt of Rocket Man from Kim Jong-un. <laughs> uh, and uh, this is another good example of North Korea holding a very strong power with the state, you know. So I'm not saying which one is the best, you know. I'm just talking about like, uh, in theory, it should have been deleted, the state, because the state is a fiction that makes us in a situation of authority. So Bakunin talks about the way the nation, the state, and the state being very connected with the nation, and not always actually, like uh, there are different nations in China, but there is one state for all these nations in China, with the Han, the Uyghur, the Tibetan, the Manchu, and uh, the Hui, and, and over Russia, of course, that can be another good example actually. And uh, but most of the time we try to centralize the idea of the nation around that state. And actually the case of France was a good one uh, with Jeanne of Arc who uh, made uh, uh, France uh, federated uh, together against the English once the English were occupying uh, the French soil according to rules of feudality and uh, like um, disputes for, for power and for like uh, who's going to be the legitimate king of France um, and so on. And uh, in that case, it's of course um, called just simply as that the state nation. So this uh, state nation is the best shortcut ever. And that actually follows the, the idea, according to Bakunin, of God. So Bakunin is famous for his book, God and the State. So God and the State is basically accusing Hegel the philosopher, the German philosopher Hegel from the 19th century, that because Hegel is treating of everything without that much mentioning God, and uh, strangely, he can respect God, Hegel, but without mentioning him, it makes him way less important. So Bakunin is saying that after the idea of God, that Bakunin is fundamentally very against, he's against religion, he's against the fiction of God, he's talking about it as idealism, but not uh, like to be idealistic with nice ideas. Actually, in this way, Bakunin would be idealist, but Bakunin considers himself as a materialist, the same way Karl Marx is a materialist. It's everything is only matter, and uh, um, you don't, like, ma everything is made of material. It's that simple. Um, and uh, Karl, Karl Marx, Bakunin, they were accusing idealism to make the the ideas first, the reality rather than just what is around you as concrete matter. He was accusing ego to make uh, the state as the new god. After specifically when ego witnessed Napoleon, the first uh, passing by Berlin, then he was thinking, okay, his history passing right in front of me. And uh, he was uh, like this idea of like a, a modern state that came out after the French Revolution, a modern state without the king, without the figure of the king. By later on, there would be republic, but like the empire can be a particular of the republic in some ways. Like just the idea of a modern state, which is very abstract if you think about it. You don't shake the hand of the state. You don't see clearly the state. But still, you know you're dealing with the state, just through to the visa system, through the, the taxes and like everything around the state, the sovereignty of the state. The modern state is a continuity of God, and both came from idealism, idealism, construction of abstract authorities that ironically men obey to. So men, man made God as much as man made the state. And that's a good summary of Bakunin philosophy. And uh, he's telling to be careful about that, specifically when man forget, forgets that he made God and he made the state. But instead we think that God makes him or the nation, or the state, if he, is, he has to be 
ultimately very loyal to, almost thinking his nation is above others and so on, made man, the state made man as well. Or like, uh, so he, he's also warning about the fact that we are way more, how to use it as a verb, like uh, statized, I'm just inventing this verb, like uh, to have the state regulating a, a man's mindsets, same way as religions can regulate our mindsets. Then he's been, if you read his book, it's a very short book, God in the State, it's very, um, he's using very strong words against religion and the idea of God. And uh, uh, two of my favorites, so one is like uh, comparing, it's very strong, it's very strong on purpose, of course. It's comparing um, the dog look, looking at his master, the same way a man would pray God, would pray God looking at the sky, the empty sky doesn't understand yet, waiting for getting like some favors in return. So he's comparing a man with the dog in that case. And then another one from Bakunin is, um, is um, about the idea, the idea, the ideal, I would say that man must be free, therefore, God cannot exist because if God exists, man is not free. Is that simple? <laughs> so you say, if man is free, must be free, then God doesn't exist. That's another one. And uh, he's uh, talking about um, theology as a very dangerous, so said science, because it's not a science. But like he said, like he says, like. Uh, you can compare theology ironically with masturbation, uh, like a very intellectual masturbation, like uh, finding problems from things that have been invented and going into different nuances. Metaphysics, he also is very, uh, he's uh, warning a lot against metaphysics, even if we sound profound using metaphysics, and specifically when people like now, they have their very meaningless life, so they want to stick to, um, they really want to stick to to fictions, just to invented stories uh, through mythologies, but not the pagan ones. This time it would be more like the monotheistic ones, let's say. They would like to stick to it as a, as a label of, I'm a more moralistic person because I'm fearing, uh, have, I'm fearing uh, like, uh, not going to heaven, I'm fearing uh, going to hell, I'm feeling, I'm fearing a judgment coming from the sky and so on. So I mean, nowadays actually with the nihilistic era, some are like uh, trying to prove that like going into religion is their way to prove they can be great people, great men great, with great values. And almost that would be even worse that only through having religion you can have values so that is kind of annoying that part also because you need to it's not because you believe in santa claus but in excuse fundamentally a very good person uh, even if uh, actually fundamentally the child may maybe around november and december not the whole year come on at least around november and december he may behave very nicely just in order for santa that he may believe in to give him the good gift on the day of Christmas. That may be a good motivation. For sure, we see, again, very good um, um, placebo consequences of religions. Um, but um, we don't have to stick to it. So, Bakunin can be, uh, is ironically very idealistic in his way to promote a society with so much optimism, you know, I think, uh, we can compare him with somewhat with Kropotkin, who is also an anarchist. I think uh, people say anarchists are maybe dark, because you imagine the chaos, the mess, violence all the time. But there is something fundamentally very optimistic, sometimes too optimistic in anarchist people, anarchist thinkers. But still, something very worth reading and uh, trying to understand from yourself. Uh, without uh, listening to um, very fast shortcuts and negative um, opinion uh, saying it's gonna be chaos and that's it, you know, like, because we often talk like this way about anarchistic 
anarchist uh, people and the violence going with this and uh, um, he, the use of violence in revolution can be another topic actually um, but there are different sides of anarchism with Bakunin somewhat it can be violent it's true um, he was doing a lot of insurrections in France, in Germany, in Dresden, and in Moscow, yeah, I mean, in Russia in general. He's been exiled to Siberia. And he got a crazy life, but um, he, he was living also in crazy times. So we can also understand this without having to judge that much history, like the same way of personally, I would not judge uh, people who were believing in the gods back in the time and so on, when I don't know how, what type of education people could get at this time, you know, at some point, they want to stick to something, they want to stick to something. Nowadays, it may be another issue, and specifically when uh, uh, people try to pull you to the Middle Ages rather than try to evolve together and try to understand all our mistakes from different geographies, you know, like all different cultures made up their own mistakes instead of sticking to the fiction and we are right, this is our, uh, our identity, the identity can stay up as a part of folklore, I would say, like a colorful colorful legends Tolkien style, um, because I talked about a lot of dreams and all, so it can be used as a folklore, but if it's taken seriously, telling people how to think, how to regulate the laws and how to punish people not obeying to such rules, then it's another topic for sure. Then religions can be very dangerous. Um, that's all for today. That's a good one about Bakun already. <laughs>